Hey guys, Saki here from Saki Tech and in today's video, I'm going to show you guys 10 settings you need to tweak on your Samsung Galaxy Note 9 that is simply going to enhance the use of your Samsung Galaxy Note 9. So let's not waste any time and dive right in. Now the first thing I want you guys to do is we put our phones in our pockets or our bags a lot. So go to the settings and uh, make sure you go over to display and scroll all the way down and make sure that block accidental touches is in fact enabled. Basically what this is going to do is it's going to prevent the screen from detecting any kind of touch input while it is in a dark place such as your pocket or a bag. So many times I have my keys and my phone in my pocket together and when I go in to grab those keys I accidentally touch my phone and before I know it it's calling somebody. So with this option enabled, it's going to try to minimize those kinds of accidents in dark areas such as the pocket or a bag. All right, let's move on to the next tactic. Now, one thing we use all the time on our Note 9 obviously is the keyboard. So it only makes sense to make sure that it's customized properly. So let me go to the messages and let me just pull up the keyboard. And as you can see, I have a black and white keyboard that in my opinion looks nicer than the regular stock keyboard. You do actually have the option to modify the way the keyboard looks. So what you want to do is go to the settings, the button on the top here, and then go to keyboard layout and feedback and make sure you tap on the keyboard themes and pick the one that you like. Okay, so uh, the nice thing with this one is it gives you a preview so I can tap on this one. That's the stock one that you're probably having on your phone right now. Uh, you can have this option here, okay, the black version of the white. And then you have these uh, more, more clear, modernized keyboard styles that you would see on the regular Android smartphones. Okay, so I, li I, like, I happen to like this one here. So click apply and that's the one. Now the same theme also applies to the keyboard that you would use for um, number input. So let me just go to somewhere where we have some numbers. Uh, let's go to the um, biometrics and security. And if you were to go try to go into one of these settings here, it's going to ask you to put your pin number in. So as you can see, the keyboard also looks different here. So you get the same color scheme that you would get on the regular keyboard. The next thing I want to talk about is the lock screen. So basically what I want you guys to do is if I do go to my lock screen right now, you'll see that I have a certain clock style. Okay, so what you can do is you can change that to anything that you want. Again, it's something we see all the time. So it only makes sense to modify so it looks the best at all times. Uh, so what you want to do is you will go to the settings, uh, go to the lock screen, and then go to clock style, and then go to lock screen over here as well, and then pick any clock style that you want from here. Okay, so as you can see, you have all these fancy options you can pick from uh, if you so desire. Now let's uh, put this one on, and you can also pick the style and also the color, so I can pick any color that I want. I can do red, green, uh, blue, whatever as you can see or you can pick these preset colors here that have gradient colors so let's just pick the uh, the red one for now click done uh, actually no let's do the green one so I can actually see what's happening click done and then when you go to your lock screen now you'll see that gorgeous clock uh, looking right at you now there's also another very important setting that needs to be changed uh, it's something that needs to be enabled and make sure it's active at all times so go to the settings, go to biometrics and security, and then under security, make sure you go to find my mobile. So when you click this, uh, first and foremost, you do need to have a Samsung account enabled and linked to this uh, setting. And basically, if you lose your smartphone, uh, you can simply go to findmymobile.samsung.com and then log in with that Samsung account that's being shown over here and it's going to locate your smartphone and it's going to give you a bunch of remote controls. I'm going to show you what those remote controls are in a second. But make sure all these options are enabled. So let's say you lost your phone, you get access to remote controls via that website, you get access to Google location services so it can actually locate exactly where the phone is on the map. And the best part is this one has to be enabled. Uh, this one says send last location to your uh, uh, find my mobile website uh, if the phone battery dies. So at least you get a clue as to where your phone was right before the actual battery died. 
So again, make sure Find My Mobile is enabled and all of these three options are actually checked. Now, if you go to the actual website, this website here, uh, on your computer, any other smartphone, on a laptop, whatever, uh, you'll see this fantastic interface as you can see on the screen. Now, if you look at that photo, you've got all these administrative options to locate your smartphone and even remotely erase the smartphone. So if there's anything important on your phone and you think uh, the person might actually get access to the phone, you can erase, reset, lock the phone as you please. You've got a bunch of options on that uh, control panel. All these options are very logical. For example, you can actually back up the phone before you erase it just in case you don't lose all the important data on the actual smartphone. All right, so one more uh, option I'm going to show you guys. First, let me demonstrate what this ne next option actually eliminates. So normally, if your phone is turned off, and if you turn it on, it goes to the lock screen, and then you have to swipe up to go to the password screen or the biometric screen and unlock your smartphone. So let me put my password in really quick and show you how to actually bypass the lock screen. So just eliminate one step. So what you want to do is you want to go to the settings again, go into display, scroll down to where it says uh, navigation bar, tap on it. And over here it says unlock with home button. So that's the home button right here. And it's a button that is pressure sensitive. So you can press and press on it by force, uh, not too much force, just a little bit. And it actually is a physical button. So when you say unlock with home button, if you read here, it says hard press the home button while the screen is off to skip the lock screen and go directly to the home screen. So basically, instead of doing this, pressing power and swiping up, what you can do is you can press this and boom, it goes straight to the pin number uh, screen. Or if you don't have a pin or a security enabled, it goes straight to your home screen, which is this guy right here. Now we know that our phones are extremely large devices, so if you do go to the settings and if you do go to advanced features, uh, make sure that the one-handed mode is in fact enabled. So this is gonna allow you to operate your phone with one hand in case you need it. So if you enable this, you have a couple options. You have two options actually. Uh, you can tap the home button three times to enable the one-handed mode, or you can sw swipe up diagonally from either of these corners. I prefer to have this one right here. So when I triple tap this button, uh, it reduces the size of the screen and I can use this with one thumb but no problem if I'm holding the phone with one hand and of course if I'm right-handed I can just have it on this side if I'm left-handed I can have it on this side and I can also resize this guy so let me just tap the corners here and as you can see you can make it even smaller if you have smaller fingers and now this is your phone uh, as you can see you can easily use this with one hand no problem Okay, when you're done using the one-handed mode, you tap anywhere outside this area, boom, you go back in business. The next thing I wanna talk about also is in the display. So if you go to the settings over here, and uh, if you go to the display, uh, you're gonna see the option that says screen resolution. Now, right now I have my screen set to QHD+, which is the highest resolution I can have on the smartphone. Now, the only problem with this resolution is the fact that it eats a little bit more battery life than if you had a full high definition plus. So I always recommend people have this in the middle. I do not recommend this at all. That's gonna be a low resolution. So the phone is not gonna look as sharp as it would if it was here or here. Of course, this is gonna be the sharpest resolution. So you're gonna get more pixels on the screen and a sharper image. However, uh, this is the best option uh, to have for maximum clarity and also additional battery life something that we all need. And the fine thing is when you do go to your phone and you change the resolution of your screen, you're, gonna, you're not gonna notice a big difference. So at full high definition plus, you're still getting a pretty high resolution, better than many other smartphones out there, but simply don't choose this one because that's gonna be a lower resolution. It's gonna take away from the total experience on the smartphone. So keep it in the middle for a sharp, high quality image and also good battery life, all right? And one thing I'm gonna show you guys just as a security feature, just to be safe, is if you do go to the settings over here, and if you go into the security, and if you scroll all the way down, go to other uh, security settings, uh, under device administration, you have device admin apps. Now device admin apps have super user access to your smartphone. So as you can see, Find My Mobile uh, app has a full access to your device. Uh, meaning it can lock and erase the phone remotely if you have to. 
Now make sure there's nothing weird in here, okay? So some programs, actually when you install them, ask for this permission, and if you give them that permission, they have full access to your device as device administrators. So make sure that no such thing is here. If you do see it, simply disable it like that. Uh, I'm not gonna do it right now because it's gonna cancel my Find My Mobile, but if you just uh, tap that uh, circle here, it's gonna check or uncheck that uh, app from accessing your device fully. So make sure that's in fact an option. Now the next thing I'm gonna talk about is the S Pen. Uh, this is something we use all the time. That's a, I'm assuming that's why we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 and not the S9 Plus. So go to the settings real quick, go into the uh, advanced features and go under S Pen and just scroll down a little bit. And this option here uh, pertains to when you remove the S Pen from its enclosure. So when S Pen is removed, in my case, I, I like to have it so it does nothing. But you do have other two options. You can open the Air Command menu automatically when you remove the S Pen from its uh, housing over here. And that's, this is the Air Command, obviously. So that's just going to pop up automatically, ready for you to utilize it. Okay, so you can go right up to it and pick the option you want and do something uh, that you like. Uh, additionally, what you can do is let me go back to the advanced uh, features here, S Pen, scroll down, tap on this, you can create a note. So when I pull the S Pen, every time I do it, this is what's gonna happen. Uh, not the air command, but it's gonna actually uh, launch this create note option, which is gonna pop a note on the screen. You can write it and boom, save and move on, okay? So in my case, I like it so when I remove the S Pen, nothing happens, so I can choose to do what I want as I remove it. All right, so that was the final setting I wanted you guys to tweak. Uh, these are just some of the things that I noticed that I use all the time and I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, if you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even any tip that you want to drop, just drop it down below. And of course, subscribe to Saki Tech, and I will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.